Welcome to my channel and to this second video on learning how to use 3D LUT Creator. Now today we're going to be talking about how to set the software preferences. <laughs> I know that's not the most exciting thing in the world, but you know it's got to be done and you may as well do it right and you may as well do it right from the start and avoid aggravation later on. Also, towards the end of the video, I'm going to give Windows users a very important tip about how to improve the integration between 3D LUT Creator and Photoshop. Now, if you find this kind of content and you're interested in this kind of content, I'd certainly appreciate your clicking on the subscribe button below and turning on notifications so you don't miss the next video in this series. Let's get started. Okay, so let's go to the software preferences. You know, it's not sexy, but it's very important. I mean, you know how sometimes something seems broken in Photoshop and you Google it for three days and finally figure out that it's a preference setting that got messed up and that you could have saved yourself three days of work had you known that? Well, we've all been there. So let's take the time to get these settings right. And then after the preferences, I'm going to show you something that's quite important in terms of 3D LUT Creator's integration with Photoshop if you happen to be a Windows machine user. All right, let's get started with the preferences. Like in most programs, if you go to File, Preferences, that'll bring them up. And we're going to go through this. Uh, the language is set automatically. This is not the grading edition. The grading edition is the edition I mentioned that I didn't actually recommend. So let's get to here. Save 3D LUT files to, if you choose Image Folder or Last Used Folder, that's where the LUT file will be saved, which means you may end up having LUTs sort of scattered all over the place, which I didn't like that idea. Custom folder, that way all your LUTs can go into one folder. Of course, when they go into Photoshop, they go as an adjustment layer in Photoshop, but the LUT in particular, if you ever want to use it again, can go into a custom folder. And you can create that folder and then using a typical browsing window, tell 3D LUT Creator where to find it. Same thing is true if you want to have a folder of favorite LUTs. Again, you can use this folder, or you can make your own folder for your favorites and store them there. The color picker area. So like in Photoshop, this is the size of the area for color sampling. And I've chosen 3x3. Three three. Some people would choose 5x5, five five, but 3x3 three three is fine. The default color picker mode is the RGB color space from 0 to 255. It's pretty standard. So this is the first thing that may not be immediately recognizable, the default grid size. And what that is, in the AB grid, which is where we're going to do a lot of our color adjustment, there are these spokes. And we can make color adjustments by moving these points around on the spokes or moving the whole spoke itself. And what this tells you is how many spokes there are in the wheel. The more spokes, the more finely you can tune your colors. 12 or 16 seems fine. You can go all the way up to 32, and I would show you what that looks like, except when you change a preference file, you can't see it until you close and restart the program. So that's just the number of spokes. 12 or 16 is, is pretty reasonable. If you have to make super fine adjustments to color, you can go higher than that. The C stands for putting it in a circle. The default color model, this is one of these you know, just do it. It's uh, It stands for hue, saturation, and perceived brightness, extended. And that's that's the one, that's the default and the one that should be used for most work that we'll be doing. Default save type. This is what dot file type your LUT should be saved as. There's several options but a .cube file is the most universally recognized of the bunch, and that's what I would suggest saving at as a .cube file. The 3D LUT size, uh, depending on the version you have, 33 may be the maximum amount of the LUT size. 
Uh, 96 is going to take a long time. It's probably too big. 33 will do. I use 64, but I have the professional edition. 33 will do fine. If you have the professional edition, I, I'd use 64. CMS Intent. This, similar to Photoshop, tells you if the images image colors are outside of the, the gamut of your color space, how should it squish them into the color space, and I'm using perceptual. Uh, these are very similar type settings to Photoshop for um, still photography. Typically, you'd use uh, perceptual or relative. Again, I have perceptual. Your background color. Uh, this is the color of the space around the image, which is normally in this window, although I don't have a window open. It's just the background against which the image sits. Curves Auto B slash W is if you're using the automatic function of the uh, curves to determine black and white points, how should that be done? Luminance range is fine. Degrade points, again, the default of 20 is fine. Uh, these two boxes are best left checked. This area here is if you're going to save images as JPEGs and it's the quality of the JPEG save. Again, saving as JPEGs from the program is not something I usually do, but you can make your own choice. Moving downwards, I'm saving the LUTs as a size 64. Obviously, if your version doesn't go up to 64, you can't do this. We want to save our backup files add a plus symbol to the image file names on saving, confirm that you really want to close the program. Border color planes just has to do with where some of these uh, color strips are located. Square AB grids means that this grid is in the form of a square. And enable usage statistics and signing files with user details. That's obviously up to you. This ensures that if a lot of yours makes it out onto the internet somehow, that your user details are associated with it, sort of like a copyright notice. So this little section here is really a lot of personal preference in terms of how you'd like to do it, and not so much something that's going to mess up your work. Onwards to integration. So 3D LUT Creator integrates exceptionally well with Photoshop. If you're not using Photoshop, however, if you're using another image processor, it will not integrate into it. You'll have to use the standalone version of the program. But it integrates extremely well into Photoshop very easily, except you have to tell it which and where your Photoshop is. So depending on which version of Photoshop you're using and when you've purchased the program, your version of Photoshop may or may not be on this list. So for example, in this latest version, Photoshop CC 2019 was in use, so it doesn't have listed Photoshop versions after that. So you have to come here and go to Custom Adobe Photoshop, and then down here to tell 3D LUT Creator where to find it. So it's in C, Program Files, Adobe, Adobe Show Photoshop 2022 in this Windows machine. So you'd come right down here and here's your C drive, down to Adobe, and Adobe Photoshop 2022 folder. You don't have to actually click on the .exe file, just the folder that contains it will be adequate. And click OK, and you're good to go, and you've told 3D LUT Creator where to find Photoshop to integrate with it. These last two boxes here, uh, I don't personally use Capture One, so uh, it's a little difficult for me to explain this, but recommendations generally are if you use Capture One to click the box. And this is if you're using or importing uh, specific camera profiles. Uh, again, I don't do that, but generally you'd want to apply the hue saturation tables when doing that. And that's pretty much it, because what we have here, LibRaw, is actually an open source type of program for processing raw files, and I don't use that to process raw files. 
Uh, if you do happen to use that, there are settings here in terms of how to use the raw processor. But again, I don't think too many people are using that. And finally, uh, the expert tab. Well, maybe we'll all be experts with the time we're done with this series. But for now, I would just leave the expert defaults. I had mentioned I was going to show you something important about 3D LUT Creator's integration with Photoshop for Windows users. Mac users can completely ignore this because it just doesn't apply to you. So in Windows, a script runs when you click here to send the LUT back to Photoshop, where it'll end up as an adjustment layer. But when a script runs, Photoshop's, Photoshop gives you a warning that it's running. And then you can click OK to allow the LUT to come in. But let's face it, you don't want to get a warning and have to click OK each time you bring your results back into Photoshop. So here's how to allow that LUT to import as an adjustment layer and not have to deal with having to get that warning or having to click OK. Do it once. You're good to go forever. Let's do it. First, you need to have a psuserconfig.txt file. You need to see if you have that. What am I talking about? OK, let me show you. If we go here, and we are going to go to our C drive, Users, and then click on your username. Now, we want to go to App Data, but you see how that folder is a little lighter? That is because it is a hidden folder. You have to go to View, Hidden Items. If Hidden Items is unchecked, you'll see that App Data folder is not there. It'll frustrate you to no end. You'll look and look, and it, you're never going to find it. You have to show Hidden Items. The App Data folder appears. And then you're going to go to Roaming, Adobe, and then your version of Adobe Photoshop. And then Adobe Photoshop 2022 settings. And don't worry, I'm going to have a banner at the bottom with the address here that you go to. And as I scroll down here, you can see that indeed I have a PS user config file. Now, if you don't have one, I'm going to show you how to make one and put it in there. But let's double click on it, and you can see it's just a notepad file. And in it, I've typed warn running scripts with no space, and then a space with a zero. Now, depending on what you've configured in Photoshop before, you may have other configuration code above this. And you may not ha have this at all, but you may have other configuration code in there. Just go to a new line at the bottom and type warn running scripts zero in there if you have other code in there already. And what that tells Photoshop to do is to no longer warn you when that LUT comes back in as a, as a script that's being run. So it'll just come back in as a layer and you'll get no warnings. So let's close that out. And what if there is no PS user config file because you've never had to configure anything? Well, that's pretty easy. What we're going to do is go right down here and we're going to open Notebook. And we are simply going to type in warn running scripts space zero. We're going to go to File, Save, and we are going to name that file PS User Config. 
and it will save as a .txt file. And then you can go and save it either to your desktop and copy it over into that folder with the Photoshop settings or save it directly to the Photoshop setting folder. And that then is how you fix that problem once and for all. Do it once and you're good to go. Well, I know that setting preferences isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but I do hope that you found this useful. In the next video, we're actually going to start having a little more fun in using the program. We'll see you next time.